Hi, my name is Teal, and I'm your host for the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast, where we share stories of amazing women who live in our communities. My hope is that you will feel encouraged and inspired after listening to each episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Be Amazing podcast. I'm your host, Seal, and I'm so excited you've decided to join me today for another inspiring story. This week, my guest is Coach Jenna. Jenna spent more than 20 years in the cosmetic dentistry industry before following her calling to become a fitness trainer. While Jenna very much looks a part of a fitness trainer, you'll be surprised as to learn that she's a grandmother of two, and y'all, she doesn't even really love working out. It's an addiction to accomplishment that drives Jenna in her own fitness journey, and this is a cornerstone at her gym in Belmont, North Carolina called About Face Total Training. She's a true believer in the transformational powers of fitness both inside and out. Jenna has built a gym and community of folks tapping their inner athlete to live their own unique definitions of a healthy and happy lifestyle. Listen in and you're likely to both laugh and cry as Jenna tells a bit of her story and shares her five foundations for health and fitness. Stay tuned for this incredible conversation with Jenna. Welcome to the show, Jenna. I am so glad to have you here today. Oh my goodness, I am glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, we're going to have so much fun chatting, and you're really not that far from me. Uh, you're, you live right outside of Charlotte. That's exactly right. We live in, we're in Belmont, right outside of Belmont. Yes, and Belmont is like up and coming and like, uh, I feel like like the hot new spot. It is. It's growing leaps and bounds, and we're excited to have all the new people come and join our little Mayberry. It's absolutely awesome. I love that. Well, tell us a little bit more about who you are. Well, I am Jenna um, Armstrong, We actually. Um, on my Facebook, it's Coach Jenna Alexander, but uh, we, we own a gym. It is about face total training in Belmont. We actually started with the name of Powder Puff Boot Camp 11 years ago. We started in some local parks and uh, seven girls in a field that has morphed into an amazing blessing that we now have our own gym space and uh, we've utilized and found our own methods to fitness and and we're growing leaps and bounds and so grateful, absolutely so grateful. But um, I am a grandmother of two. How about that? That's Which is so, (laughs) can I just say right now, it's so hard to believe. You can't even believe that. Thank you. You At all. Thank you. Um, we are so blessed. We just had two babies on the same day, 12 hours apart. Absolutely amazing. And we have a huge blended family. So one of my best friends is my um, future husband's ex-wife. And so all of our family comes together in a beautifully bl- blended way. And um, and she actually helps at the gym as well. She's a professional banker, but um, it, we just have a beautiful family. And that's one of the reasons fitness is so important to me is because I want to be able to um, enjoy every moment of my life and have this amazing adventure with these amazing people God has gifted me in my life. And uh, so it's definitely unique, but our gym's a little bit different. We do a total training theme. So um, people who are weekend warriors, maybe in college and high school, you were super competitive or you just enjoyed the thrill of a new adventure. We continue that. We do mud runs. We do fitness competitions. We do ultra marathons together, races and all kinds of things that just continue to live our life in a new adventurous way. And it just keeps the spark. If you get that competitive spark in you, it just keeps it alive. So we're very grateful for that opportunity. That's so awesome. And I think it's incredible that you have, like, you really help those people because there are a lot of athletes that once you get out of high school, college, it never goes away. Right. That drive to compete and it just doesn't disappear. And sometimes when you get older, your self image goes up or you want to do things that you were too afraid or you know, too self-confident, confident, um, incompetent to uh, try when you're younger. And you're like, you know what, I could do this. And so um, it also plays a part in the people who are like, I really want to go on some new adventures and see what I'm made out of. So it's a blessing to both, both scenarios. Yeah. Tapping that inner athlete. Absolutely. I'm, like that's where it's at. <laughs> really, for all big kids that still love to play and go on a big adventure. Yes, I'm all about that. I love Spartan and mud runs and competition and races. Like that's definitely my language and and where I like to, where I am now as an adult, I love that and uh, surround myself with people that are in the same same space. So it's awesome that you have like, you actually have a gym that focuses on that. And I think that creates an incredible community. 
absolutely. Our community is the absolute best. We're so grateful for all of our, um, our family. It's our family. We do life with them. So it's grateful. I'm really grateful for it. That's awesome. Well, when did you first get hooked on fitness yourself personally? I don't know that I ever got hooked on fitness. I would definitely not call myself a fitness enthusiast. I don't think I have to be in the gym every day to feel accomplished. I think for me, um, I got hooked on fitness, accomplishing things I never dreamed I could accomplish. Um, I was going through a really bad divorce uh, about 11 years ago and fitness became my outlet. And um, my husband at the time was cheating on me. So my self-doubt, my self-confidence was at a all-time low, and I started working on myself. And um, to me, it, fitness is a part of being like transformational inside and out. And so that's what happened. And so for me, I think when I see somebody that spark in their eyes, they just did something for the first time. It's like they're getting their power back. And it's something you can't, no one can do this for you. Therefore, nobody can take it away from you. And there's something special about that accomplishment. And so whether it's a 5K or a burpee, you know, I don't think I'm like, I love working out every single day. Like most people would assume that I do. It's the process of transformation on the inside that radiates out. And it's that sense of accomplishment when you do something that you never dreamed. And it's just a sign that you can do so much more than you ever dreamed and that you do have something in you that you got to dig deep for. But I definitely would not call myself a fitness influencer or uh, enthusiast by no means. Well, I think that's interesting because I think a lot of people make that assumption. Like if you, I, are, they do. <laughs> if you, yeah. If you're a fitness professional or if you have anything to do with that realm, that, that, that this is like all you eat and breathe and live, right. and go to the gym and lift weights and run fast. And, and it's not the case at all. Not at all. Um, you know, I was honored this year to be selected to run for the Boston and it's just not my year to do it. So I declined. There's other things that I need to accomplish, but people are like, Oh, you're a runner or because I've done fitness competitions, you're a competitor. No, I'm Jenna. And these are things that I'm able to do to put icing on my life. It's just an adventure that I get to do that I enjoy with other people. So I definitely am not, I definitely am not wanting to be looked at like a fitness anything. I'm Jenna and I enjoy doing these things. And it's just a part of what I get to do. That's awesome. So you really don't rely on that as your identity. Um, no, I pray that so nobody cool. sees me like that. Seriously. Um, because if so, when people are looking at you, if you are in the fitness industry, sometimes they can say like, well, I will never be able to do that. Well, of course you can. I'm just, I'm just a 48 year old woman who loves to have fun and go on these amazing adventures. You could do anything I can do and probably even better probably even better. <laughs> I love that. And then there's no doubt like why you have the gym that you have and, and the community that you have because of how your approach to it. And that brings people in because it takes that level of intimidation out. Right. Well, you know, most of my avatar are people who are professionals and they have kids and their kids are in ball of some sort or some kind of athletic thing. And so the last thing you need is pressure, but they want to enjoy themselves while seeing what they're made out of. And so it definitely is a benefit if it's icing in your life instead of the everything in your life. We've already got too many everythings in our life. So I think um, that's when people have the yo-yos in life, when they act like this is, I've got to nail this one thing. I think you need to find a balance and a happiness with all of it to bridge it together, to make it just a part of your life. I really love that. That's awesome. Thank what, you. Um, when did you, so when did you know though, that fitness was to be your career path and that helping others was like your jam? Well, in 1990, I was a trainer with people who um, had just had heart attacks and it was cardiac rehabilitation. And um, I ended up in the dental field, cosmetic dentistry for 23 years, believe it or not. But when I was going through my divorce, I, before my divorce, I had gotten off track with my fitness goals. Um, I put everybody's needs first, just like most moms do, right? And um, I had gained 65 pounds. And so when I was going through this moment where I, I knew that I had to take my life back and I was responsible for my happiness, I was like, I'm going to start taking care of myself. And as in that journey, I found out who I was and that I was stronger than I dreamed of. Um, and we, like I said, was going through the divorce and I just literally hit my knees when we sold our last business and everything was final. I was like, God, you've literally taken my everything away, my home, my name. What, what do you have me do? And he said, share with others what made you feel strong. And so I popped up on Facebook. I'm like, hey, I'm going to do a boot camp <laughs> next weekend at Martha Rivers Park. And 
And over the course of, this will be our um, 11th year, it's just morphed into something I just can't explain. It's been more of a blessing to me than I'm sure I've been to anybody's life because watching these people, it's just been a blessing, an absolute blessing. But um, along the way, we've learned a lot. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And there have been moments you've had to pivot as well, just including everybody like this last year. Yeah. You all started doing some things uh, online, correct? We did. Um, we were a gym base and I was always afraid to go online. Um, and I never really want to be the front person. So when you get on Instagram and you start doing videos, it's kind of intimidating. And I just never wanted to do that. But when they made the call that all gyms had to shut down, I realized at that moment that your methods that you do things are not near as important as your principles. And that's with everything in life. So we just popped the clutch and we went virtual and we didn't skip a beat. And now currently we're running our second only online program that maxed out within 24 hours. And then this time we grew 60% of that. So there's definitely a need for that, but you know, what a blessing that COVID did bring. I mean, there's not many blessings that it brought, but it was one to learn how to number one, know that your principles should always never change, but your methods may, and that's okay. You'll learn along the way and you'll tweak and adjust and, uh, and nothing stays the same. So you have to be flexible in the methods that you get to the people that need you. And, um, and we learned to be super creative and get over ourselves when it, when it's scary. So it was a beautiful blessing for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I think the part that you said, you know, I'm not the front person. I'm not the one to jump on and do video. And then this puts you right in that position where you had to, you know, push that aside and, yeah. and keep going and keep moving. And it's incredible to see like how that has impacted in such a positive way, uh, your community. Yeah, and we have definitely been blessed. And we're grateful um, that our community still stood with us and held hands because we were just as nervous as them because this is what we do. This is definitely how we, um, you know, we validate what, what our calling is. And so for them to lock arms with us, even in the midst of the past year, and now coming back into the gym, we're just hybrid and, uh, and growing. It's, um, it's been amazing for sure. So cool. Well, I, you talked about like, you know, principles and that and foundation. So I really think you have some things that you really stick to and wanted you to share, you know, three of the important foundational things you believe in that are essential for anybody who is wanting to transform their body. So I have five. I hope you don't mind me sharing. Okay, no, not this at is all. Fitness Go for to it. Me. So number one, I think that because the, the world is so loud and so eager to tell you what fitness is, you have to define it for yourself. So this is my definition of if I'm looking at if I'm healthy right now, one, I have to like myself, which is really hard in the world that we live in because we there's so much noise to say, hey, you're not enough, right? So one, I have to constantly be working on a relationship with myself. If you weigh 98 pounds and have a six pack abs and, and you can bench press, a car and you don't like yourself, it's null and void, right? So number one, you have to like yourself. Number two, you have to surround yourself with like-minded people that on your bad days are going to pull you up and vice versa. You can return the favor. You're, the, the crew that you're around is going to make life doing, it's going to make it matter. And so it's going to put the adventure into it. And on the hard days, they're going to pull you up. So that's number two for me. And you don't want to be around toxic people either. So anything toxic, you got to get rid of it. Number three, you have to have a really, really good relationship with food. Food is not your best friend. So many people say they struggle with food and they, they're stress eaters or whatever it is. It's not your best friend. It's fuel for your body. You have to have a really good relationship knowing that if you are going through a divorce, it's not going to give you that hug that you need. It's not going to pray with you. It's just a so source of energy. And then you have to have a really good relationship with movement. It's not punishment that you've let yourself get out of control or whatever. It is a way to stay healthy. It's bone health, heart health, and muscular health. And stress relief. <laughs> and what yes. we, we'll be all been through what we've needed stress relief. And lastly, this is my big one. You have to be grateful for where you are. So many women compare 
their weaknesses to somebody else's strength. And that right there is so toxic because it makes you want to just quit before you start. You could look at somebody like I could be looking at you going, she's 10 years ahead on her journey. If I was like her, it'd be different. You can't do that. You have to be grateful for where you are and, and appreciate where you are along the way. You're going to grow and change. Be excited about that. But I think if those things are out of alignment for me, that's when I'm toxic and unhealthy for myself. So I know a lot of people's metrics is, you know, can you bench press or how fast is your run or whatever? It doesn't matter to me if those things are not level and they've always got to be in check. And to be honest, I don't think we always nail all five. It's a continual process, but that's my foundation of fitness right there. I love that. I think that's so important. I think everything that you talked about is right on point and I, and it's simple. It's not, we overcomplicate it. And I think with fitness and a lot of, you know, like you said, you know, people can get really stressed out with food. Yeah. You know, the, the relationship there can be very tough because it is used for so many other things than fuel. Like it's exactly, used, it, it can be used for everything but fuel. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think right now, if you look at it, if you're coming in and you say, okay, I want to start my fitness journey. It is a very complicated space because there's so many methods out there and there's so much noise. You have to keep it simple. The last thing we need is something more overwhelming. But if we're not careful, that's how we get sucked into the vortex of yo-yo dieting and switching plans to another because we, oh, well, that one didn't work. We'll go over here. You've just got to realize it's very simple. It's a process. It's going to take time of consistency and, uh, and don't try to confuse it. Right on. Cause it's, you know, there's no simple, it's simple, but there's no, like, um, there's no quick fix and there's no, um, you know, I feel like that's the case with a lot. And, I, and with a lot of women, they'll try one program that, that, like you said, that doesn't work. They go to something else because they're trying to find like the perfect, like, well, if, you know, there's gotta be like this perfect fit and it's not like, it's this exactly. ongoing forever ongoing process. And yeah, Exactly. I, I love how your, your approach to it. And I love that these are the foundation of what you do with your clients and what you believe in. And you're obviously very passionate about what you do um, and, and the community that you serve. And I think that's, that's freaking awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have, do you have a story of a client that has stuck with you or somebody that you have seen <sighs> like transform their life. And it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be, you know, I always think we say transformation, everybody immediately goes to physical, but just like transformation or, or maybe, you know, something that just moves to you to moves you personally to this day. Yeah, we, um, and I promise you, I'll probably tear up on this one. So we try to get people to go on an adventure. So when they don't think about the pounds lost or needed to be lost, that they just genuinely get into something that they enjoy doing, like running or Spartan races and you're constantly just becoming better at it. Well, we had this one lady, her name was Nikki. I can barely say your name without tearing up. She uh, started with us to lose some weight and along the way found a love for running. She ran her first half marathon with us. We drove to Myrtle beach about like 20 of us and, and we ran and she did so well. The next week she sent me a message and she said, Hey coach, listen, I need a new goal. Now that I've hit this goal, you always think outside of the box, give me a goal, just throw it out there. Give me something that's going to challenge me. And it's going to get me up out of bed at four 30 because she was a homeschool mom. She had to get up early to do it. And I was like, you know what, Nikki, you are a beautiful runner. Let's do a marathon. That'll teach you endurance. And she was like, okay, there might be a lot of tears. I was like, I'll cry with you, whatever it takes, we can get through it. So fast forward about three weeks, um, we found out that she had cancer and it was stage three and the process <laughs> was, um, wild to watch her go through it. And I went to the hospital to go visit her and I was talking to her and, um, she whispered, um, to take her to a marathon. And I was like, I'm going to run this marathon for you, Nikki Bailey. I'm going to get out there. It's going to be your heart and my feet. So Misty, my friend who I know, you know, um, she and I trained and we were going to go run. And I had promised Nikki Bailey that I would win for her in our age group. And so um, 
my hopes was is that I would give her an inspiration every time my feet hit the, the pavement when I was training I'd send her pictures and and I'd let her know I was out there doing it so she could run her race with endurance that she was battling cancer but along the way she changed my life because every time I visited her to check in she was just so grateful for the days that she had she asked God for 40 more years so she could repay everybody who loved her um, and we had the privilege to run that race for her and I did actually come in second place in my age for her and I had the honor to give her uh, the the plaque. That was her plaque. Um, but what I realized at that moment was, yes, I am a personal trainer. Yes, I own a gym. And these people are gifts that are sent to me for whatever reason, um, for a season. And I'm supposed to remind them who they are and whose they are. But along the way, they transform my life. And so on those pavements, a lot of tears came from me and I watched her in the midst of all of the stuff coming at her, being afraid that she was going to pass away, which she did, and her children, what was going to happen, but she was still grateful and grounded in her faith. I learned and she prepared me for what COVID threw at us and what life's going to throw at me tomorrow, how to stand firm in my beliefs and my principles. So uh, we both won that endurance race because life is one big endurance race, but Today, I still think about her every single day. She is the biggest warrior I've ever met. And I'm honored that she walked through those gym doors. And, um, and I was able to be a tiny part of her life because she became a very huge part of my life and how I see life now. I am not blissfully ignorant. I know every moment matters. Sometimes people will say, make time count or you know, make this count. Time's going to count on the clock no matter what. Are you going to make it matter? Are you going to be mindful in this moment? And know that not everybody woke up today and that there are people who do want to get up and go run, but they can't, they're not capable of it. So you have to make every moment matter and just not be blissfully ignorant. Like this is going to go on forever. We're not going to be here forever. Don't take it for granted. So that's, we have so many stories I could share with you, but that one not only transformed somebody else in our gym, but she transformed me and how I see and do life. And um, I'll forever be grateful for her. That's so awesome. That touched my heart. Now I got to because like that to me is like that just shows the person that you are and the people that you draw in and how you're impacting those around you. And it's incredible when it goes both ways and when somebody can impact your life in such a big way. Um, I think that's all. I mean, it's just an incredible story. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing her story. Um, she is an amazing woman. I promised her family I would not let her, her life go forgotten. And um, so we'll go to Boston, not this year, but next year. And we will, awesome. we'll train awesome. for that one too. <laughs> yes, that's, that's really great. That's like, that to me is like so incredible. Like her, that you're carrying, you know, it's sharing her story and continuing it on. And uh, that's what it's all about is, uh, and that's really why this podcast is here is just because it's all about sharing women's stories and like not every woman that's, that we talk about is everybody going to know, but everyone has a story and everyone's yeah. story should be shared because that story is going to impact somebody else. Just like, well, I think we're a lot more you. alike than we try to pretend that we're not, you know, I think, um, women, we're all the same. I mean, pretty much. The bones of it so when you tell one person hey this transformed my life we kind of feel it in our soul and sometimes we feel it deeply and we're faced with do we want to change and grow like that person did and we don't so we get bitter like whatever but I think we're all the same we all struggle daily and I just try to be really honest with the people that walk through my doors that I struggle too and I don't think you ever stop struggling you're going to continue to learn and grow and become better I pray I become better tomorrow than I am today and I think that's just important that we all know that. And when you tell your story, you empower me. And so um, it's really good to share those stories like that. Yeah, that's on point. Like you, this whole podcast, like this whole conversation is, is to me is everything what it's about. And it, it takes the, you know, I think fitness has become so commercialized and, and there's such a focus on, you know, the benefits of the outside of what our bodies do, but like, there's something so much more to it than, than just that. And everything you're sharing is exactly to me, what, to me, what fitness and health is, or to me, what being part of community is, it's that combination, um, and finding a way to relate. 
um, and inspire each other. So that's so cool. Yeah. Thank you. I am. Um, I love what you're doing as well, because I think when women find like a little bit of failure, which they call failure, they don't want to try, but by you sharing all these stories from women, it gives them hope. Like we all fall. And then we get up like this. And I think women are so afraid to fail because of society, how they look at you. And, and we feel this undue stress that we put on ourselves or pressure to always be perfect and never fall. And well, the following is where you find yourself. And it's also where you find your strength and your power. And that can't be taken away from you. So I really appreciate what you're doing here as well. We have, I just feel like that every, like every woman I come in contact with, they, there's some, they have something that inspires or, you know, and a lot of times I'll have people go, oh, Steele, I don't have a story. Like, I, I don't, you know, I don't have anything grand. And I'm like, it's not about the grand. Like, who cares about that? Like, right. we all have faced our own challenges and we all need to know that. Like, I need to know that somebody else is facing, that's struggling, you know, like I just, <laughs> I just think that we all need that. We'll exactly. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. In a Facebook world where every picture is perfect, we <laughs> need to know that it's not always perfect and it's not supposed to be. Right. And they're all and that, in this together. That's it. That's I totally agree. All, yeah. That's what it's all about. I've so enjoyed this conversation. Um, but I'm going to flip this. We're going to flip past this. <laughs> we're okay. going to go to the next things that I wanted to talk to you about. One of them was like, I want to know, because now you've told me that you don't like to work out, don't. but is there something that you actually like to do? <laughs> <laughs> what is one thing I like to do? Is that yes. what you asked? What do you like to do? I honestly, um, I love to run. I am a runner at heart and um, it's therapy for me. So um, I do enjoy that. And I enjoy the high intensity intervals. I love that. Just kind of takes the stress right away. Um, I don't like it when I'm doing it. I love it when I'm done and I'm, you know, I enjoy that. I do that mostly right now. I'm actually popping the clutch and um, I'm focusing on heavier lifting right now. So I'm putting that both of those to the side. I want to compete in wellness in about six months. And so it's going to take a lot of discipline um, to increase my calories and, and my lifts in there. But that's my goal right now, because I've always been afraid, like I'm five foot tall, weigh 103 pounds. Can I do that? And so normally I would start the process and just get afraid of it because it's going to take hard work and it's going to take discipline and fortitude. And, and when I don't see things change, just like everybody else, I'm like, well, you know what? My body's not designed to do this. So right now my focus is on the heavier lifts and uh, I've taken most of my cardio out right now temporarily and I'm going to see it through. And, and maybe in, in six months, I haven't developed all the muscle that I wanted to, but at least I will have finished stronger than I started and I'll see how this process plays out. But I am a runner at heart and um, I, I do ultra marathons and they're fun to do that. <laughs> so I know people call people crazy who run ultra marathons and, and they enjoy it, but I do. I really do enjoy that. There is a certain level because as soon as you say that, or you even say marathon, I'm already there going, man, that takes a lot. Cause I don't right. know, what's I'm wrong just, with her. <laughs> well, no, I've just found like running for me over the past couple of years has become my thing. Like I enjoy running, but I'm like, I kind of cap it at where I run. So, and how long I run. So it's like, for me to think about a marathon or ultra marathon, I'm just like, man, that takes a lot. Like anybody that think does about that, it and how many like, classes that level. take. So if I, I think like, okay, I can finish this race in two classes. So if I do two hour classes, like I think of how many classes it would take me to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish awesome. this race in three classes. That's awesome. So yeah. Now, do you have a favorite song quote, like anything that you go to right now, that's like your go-to to get you through a workout or just to get you through Honestly, um, I don't know if you ever listened to uh, Stephen Furtick, but he has these little music mm -hmm. clips. I listen to those when I'm running or when I'm working out and, um, and on my way to work, I listen to them as well. Um, I know it sounds crazy or I'll pop on one of his sermons and I don't even go to his church, but just something about it gets my mind right on serving others and serving myself. And it reminds me who I am and whose I am. And so it kind of gears me up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. You know, if this is what I made up, let's do it. So that's what I, that's currently what I do. I listen to I a lot that. of those. Well, I was going to say we're in the same space. Cause like I have podcasts that I listen to while I run and they rotate. It's either Stephen Furtick. It's, uh, <laughs> I have, um, uh, gosh, a couple of them. Earn your happy with Lori Harder. 
uh, I love Lauren Carter. Oh, I know. So I rotate these, like, <laughs> and it's awesome. Like, if I yeah, need to, I was listening to Lauren Harder a lot during COVID, and um, when she was talking about like rebranding yourself, like mm-hmm. reopening or grand reopening, I think about that daily because every day is a new day to re grand open and. Um, so yeah, absolutely. We are in the same headspace right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause that's, those are my two, those are mainly my two go-to and she just came out with a new one with her girlfriend. It's called girlfriends in business. Freaking yeah. awesome. So there's like three of them that I rotate, but yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Stephen Furtick for sure. And those clips that he does have. And there was one in particular that he put out a couple of years ago that I'll listen to every once in a while. Um, Do it again. Time. Yes. Love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I, and that one, and I have confidence. I listen to those a lot yeah. when I'm running or working out. I like to focus that I have confidence and <laughs> I can do it yes. again. <laughs> yes. It's just like that to me, just, it will fuel your fire to keep pushing forward. Absolutely. So I love that. That's how you, that that's, that's the same for you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, is there, is there anything else on your heart that you want to share with the listeners? I think it's important, like if I were to leave one take home message in a world filled of opinions about everything, you need to figure out what your opinion is about health and fitness and who you are, like what's important to you. You know, um, we can name celebrities and people like, oh, I want that, but, or this, that, or, and you, you, in your mind, put it together that you're going to be more liked or more accepted if you had things like that. Truth is, we don't know the full story of their life and if they're even really happy. It's kind of like they live their life on a screen. So I would just highly encourage everybody to sit down and what is your hashtag best life? Like, what would that be for you? What does that look like? You know, some people look at people on Instagram who are, I don't know, maybe IFBB pros and they go, I want to look like that. Well, first of all, she may have been doing that for like 20 years. Make sure you know that. It wasn't like she did a 16 week program and bam, she's like that, or you don't even know the whole story. You don't know if you want that lifestyle that it's going to take. Like she may not have a job. She's doing this. She's doing that. You need to find your opinion of what healthy and happy is. And you be brave enough to stand up and live that. And, you know, I've never been intimidated to be a, a gym owner or a fitness coach or personal trainer and not be the most muscular person in the room, because I've already decided what my health and fitness definition is. So I can walk into any fitness space and still feel confident. I can talk to any personal trainer and feel confident because I've defined that for myself. So if I could leave you with one take home message, don't let somebody tell you what your opinion of being healthy and happy is. You do that and write that down. And, you know, you look on Facebook, it's hashtag living my best life or best life. What is that for you? You know, are you just scrolling and trolling on Facebook and saying, okay, that's what I want. I mean, do you really want that? You don't know. I would highly encourage somebody to sit down with themselves and define what that means. And when you do that, your path becomes easier. What you need to do to accomplish that becomes easier and you become more at peace and you enjoy it. I think that happy is really important in your life. Being happy and at peace is so important. But if you're trying to live somebody else's life, or through somebody else's opinion, I don't know if you're going to be that happy and healthy. That's such a good message. And it's um, such, such a good takeaway. Uh, because well, I think, you. yeah, I think that's such an important question, because it is very personal to each person is his own and her own. And Um, and defining that for yourself, you're right. We can easily get caught up in somebody else's journey or what somebody else is doing and want that. But like you said, you don't know all that they're doing to get there or their, their why, you know, why are they doing that? Exactly. So much deeper than the shallow of what we think it is like. So yeah, that I, that what incredible takeaway. I really, appreciate everything that you've said today, um, sharing your heart, sharing the story. Um, and thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. You, you truly define what it means to own who you are, stand in your power and your confidence. And to me, that's amazing. And that's what this is all about. And, uh, I feel more inspired leaving the conversation than when I came in and I'm going to say that for anybody that's listening, I have no doubt they're going to walk away feeling like, okay, like, (laughs) <laughs> I, I want, you know, like, I know, like, I know what my health and fitness is, you know, or yes. I like me, you know, or I want to fit, I want to do something about 
myself so that I can like me. So I, I just, yeah. everything you say has been so important. If I can just say this too, you know, one of the things that women my age hear is you can't pour from an empty cup. And I really wish that were true. You know, I really wish I could scare everybody go, you know what, you got to take care of yourself because you can't pour from an empty cup. But the fact is you can, we do it every single day. We give to others unconditionally and we show up for other people until we're exhausted and we don't complain. Most of the part of our hearts, right? We do this because we're loving and nurturing, but the magic moment is to find that little slice of what makes you happy and at peace and fill in your own cup. That's like the overflowing effect because we can definitely show up in life with an empty cup. Trust me, I've done it a million times. The power is finding out how to fill your own cup and what makes you happy and owning that and not letting anything or anyone. Well, actually, I don't think anybody ever takes that away from you. I think you give it away. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody takes anything from you. I think you give your joy and your happiness and your peace away um, and just get your power back and, and stay happy and stay in that peaceful place. And then you become really powerful. And then you become really happy and your life shifts. That's when transformation really starts to happen. Yes. And that, that to me is, is everything. Like when you find that place and you can really just like who you are and it just, it changes, it changes everything. Definite game changer. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being on today. Where can everyone find you or connect with you? Okay. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We have websites, but it's about face total training. Um, and I'm Coach Jenna Alexander on Facebook. Reach out to us. I'd love to meet everybody. Even if our methods aren't for you, I would still love to know where you are on your fitness journey. And I'd love to hear from you. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on today. I cannot wait to share this episode. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining me today. If you like the podcast, please like and share this with other women in your life. You can find out more about SweatNet on SweatNet.com or follow them on Instagram at SweatNet and SweatNet Charlotte. You can follow me personally on Instagram at It Seals Smart. Stay tuned for the next episode of the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast.